Good evening. I would like to call the December 12, 2016 Belbrook City Council meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Edwards? Here. Mr. Greenwood? Here. Mr. McGill? Here. Mrs. Middlestetter? Here. Mrs. Seeger Lawson? Here. Deputy Mayor Schweller? Here. Mayor Baird? Here. Formal approval of the City Council work session and regular meeting minutes of November 28, 2016. Does any member on council have any corrections or additions to the regular City Council meeting minutes of our last meetings? I had none, Mayor. None, no. Mayor. No. Seeing none, the minutes are approved as written. Mayor's announcements and special guests. I have nothing this evening. Uh, public hearing and ordinances. We do have two public hear hearings of ordinances this evening. Ordinance number 2016-13. Mrs. Seeger Lawson. Ordinance number 2016-13. An ordinance amending ordinances 2015-16 and 2016-10 to adjust the City of Bellbrook appropriations to reflect additional costs in some line items and reduced costs in other line items. Whereas the City of Bellbrook adopted the 2016 annual budget based on the best information available at the time. And whereas additional costs have or will occur in some line items and reduced costs are projected in other line items, which requires the amendment of various appropriation levels. Now, therefore, the City of Bellbrook hereby ordains Section 1 that the 2016 appropriation levels and several of the funds listed below be amended as follows. Uh, there are seven line items uh, that add to the total general fund adjustment. Um, uh, the adjustments are personal services, other expenses, and 2016 supplemental appro appropriations in total. Um, there's $1,155 coming additional funds into personal services and $7,200 coming out of other expenses for a total net difference of $6,045. And then there's nine line items uh, that add to, uh, that are added to that for a total grand of all funds grand total of all funds, uh, personal services being decreased by 60845 and other expenses increased by $27,700 for a total net difference of negative 33145 Section 2, that this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced from and after the earliest period provided by law. Yes, uh, this is uh, the, the second time this year that we've uh, done some uh, supplemental or an amendment to our original appropriations that were passed in December of last year. Um, as you stated, this is an actual decrease of appropriations by $33,000. Uh, as we go throughout the year, uh, things change, uh, things that, uh, projects that we anticipated happening don't happen or vice versa. Um, so we just sort of clean up and make sure that uh, everything is appropriated. Uh, and it, it later on, as we after we go through the 2017 appropriations, you'll sort of see where the, where the ending balance ends up being. But this is just more of a housekeeping measure to keep us in compliance with the budgetary law of the state. Do we have any questions on council? This is a public hearing. If anyone would have any questions or input. Seeing no one standing up, I call this public hearing Closed. May I have a motion to approve ordinance number 2016-13? Move that we approve ordinance number 2016-13. May I have a second? A second. And roll call. Motion by Mrs. Seeger Lawson to adopt ordinance number 2016-13 and ordinance amending ordinances 2015-16 and 2016-10 to adjust the City of Bellbrook appropriations to reflect additional cost in some line items and reduced cost in other line items, seconded by Mrs. Middlestetter. Mrs. Seeger Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Moving on, we have one more ordinance and public hearing this evening, ordinance number 2016-14, <coughs> Mr. Schweller. Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance number 2016-14, an ordinance approving the appropriations of the City of Belbrook for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2017. Whereas the City Council has reviewed the proposed 2017 annual budget, whereas the City of Belbrook desires to adopt the 2017 annual budget and authorize the related appropriations, now therefore the City of Belbrook hereby ordains Section 1, 
that to provide for the current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Bellbrook during the fiscal year ending December 31, 2017, the following sums be, and they are hereby set aside to be appropriated as follows. The funds are broken down into personal services, other expenses, and transfers. The personal services total separated, or I guess allocated to various funds, totals the amount of $3,749,030. Other expenses total the amount of $3,437,200. Transfers of $500,000 even. For a grand total 2017 appropriation of $7,686,230. I didn't provide all the details of various funds because our city managers are going to provide a budget update or a budget presentation as soon as this is read in. Section 2 that the finance director is hereby authorized to make payments from any of the foregoing appropriations upon receiving proper documentation approved by the officers authorized by law to approve the same. In Section 3, this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced from and after the earliest period provided by law. And this is our 2017 budget. I think we have a presentation by the city manager to look forward to. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, just as a, a precursor to this, uh, council has met on several different occasions uh, leading up to this uh, to go to all the detail. So although it's a uh, over $7 million, almost $8 million in appropriations. There's been a lot of discussion on this, and we'll go through a very high-level overview tonight, but Council has already seen uh, a lot more of the detail. Um, so the, the first thing here, just uh, how does this relate to our mission statement? Uh, one of the key phrases within the, Bel the City of Bellbrook's uh, mission statement is that we're fiscally responsible uh, uh, for our uh, residents and I think uh, this budget uh, uh, meets that goal meets that objective uh, defined in our mission statement as a as an overview of the entire budget uh, just to give uh, give you a sense uh, to start what we're estimating to start 2017 we're estimating that uh, there'll be uh, 4.6 million dollars this is all funds for all purposes uh, we're anticipating bringing in about 7.9 million dollars uh, spending about 7.7 .7 million dollars with a net difference of a positive uh, nearly $200,000 uh, to end uh, with an ending balance of $4.8 million. Now, this is all great, but as everyone here knows, certain uh, pockets of that money can only be certain spent for certain things. So although uh, on the whole there's a positive, I'll show you here in a minute how uh, there are certain areas that uh, uh, it is not that way. So the first area, these are the, uh, uh, the funds that are supported by property taxes. So. Uh, the voters of Bellbrook vote to uh, put property tax levies on uh, to support uh, the general fund, the police and the fire fund, and then uh, with that, the certain capital improvements are supported by that. Uh, that is going to begin the year with just under $2.5 million. Uh, we're going to have income of $4.1 million, expenses of about $4.25 million, and uh, the net difference is a deficit of $133,000. So that uh, balance is going to decline uh, by uh, $132,000. Uh, just to give you a little sense, in 2016 that balance declined by, we're estimating, by $253,000. So we've had a period of years where the property tax supported funds have declined. Uh, we've been uh, eating into our uh, reserve balance, which is uh, stands right now at about uh, $2.5 million. We've been eating into that over uh, the last several years, and uh, we'll talk more about that as we go on here. Next set of funds are the transportation related funds. Uh, these are funds that are primarily for the roads and the streets within the city, uh, funded by motor vehicle registrations and gasoline taxes. Uh, they can only be used for roads and streets. That's the only purpose that they can be used. So uh, we fund some of our service department out of this. We uh, fund uh, the purchase of road salt, our street striping program, things like that all come out of this program. Uh, this is uh, more stable. It has a beginning balance of about $300,000. Uh, income and expenses are relatively uh, uh, stable there, uh, so we'll end the year with uh, slightly more uh, than we began the year in the transportation related funds uh, section. And then we have the water related funds, and this is where we, uh, we see a positive uh, uh, surplus at the end of uh, this year. Uh, we're starting the year with about $1.6 million. We're going to have income just under uh, $3 million, expenses about $2.6 million, so we're going to have a a positive surplus of over $300,000 in the water fund this year. Uh, primarily, some of this is estimated, but it's primarily due to the, some of the developments that are in the township going on. 
Uh, if you look at the landings, which is on Upper Bellbrook, Waterford, which is on Feedwire, um, and then White Oak, which is behind Walmart, all those tap fees are going to be coming in. They're, those are all, even though they're in the township, they're on the Bellbrook water system, so we get the tap fees. Uh, so we'll see a, an increase in revenue there. Of course, those tap fees are intended to fund the, the maintenance of the, the water infrastructure for years to come. So that's the purpose of those. Uh, but we're anticipating over the next couple of years as those, de those developments really uh, begin to grow, uh, we'll see some revenue for those. Uh, so we're going to end the year with uh, nearly $2 million in the water fund. But again, it can only be spent on water-related pur purposes. It can't be spent for police officers or firefighters, uh, things of that nature. So looking at the revenue, uh, our revenue uh, by source, uh, this is all revenue. So it includes uh, the charges for, for, for services, which is what we get for water, what we get for waste collection. Uh, it includes the property tax. Intergovernmental uh, at 8% this year is larger than it normally is because we have about $900,000 that's coming from an Ohio Public Works Commission's grant and loan uh, for a significant capital improvement project. So that's no higher than it normally would be. But those, some of that is one-time revenue. Uh, but we're going, we're anticipating in total, we're going to collect uh, just about $7.4 million, again, most of it from property taxes and uh, charges for services for water and trash. Um, we, we've talked about this now for a number of years, but uh, uh, the state back in 2008, 9, 10, they made some significant changes to the amount of money that was passed along to the local governments. Uh, as you can see here, in between 2008 and 2011, uh, the city averaged about $360,000 a year for in state revenue. Uh, that could have been the yellow portion here is a state tax, the red portion uh, was just some other state revenue, some reimbursements, and then the blue portion was the local government fund. So that was uh, averaged over those years. The state tax was obviously inconsistent, but it averaged about $360,000 a year. As you can see, the only thing left now is the local government fund. That has been cut in half, so we're anticipating about $93,000 uh, in 2017. That's a decrease on an annual basis of $265,000 a year. Uh, if we still had that consistent revenue source, uh, we'd go back to that uh, property tax supported funds page and we would not have a deficit there. Uh, we would have a significant balance. We'd be in, in good financial shape. The state made the decisions that they felt they had to, but they really, all they did is pass it down to the local governments, and now we're, we're dealing with it here. Uh, the property tax dollars uh, is, is a significant portion, obviously. The, the residents of Bellbrook, this is uh, how they fund their local governments. As you can see here, uh, the schools get 55% of that money. Uh, the city is about 23%, 22.5%. Uh, and then uh, the county, uh, the JVS, the park district are the other sources of funds. Uh, so when you pay your uh, property tax bill a couple times a year, this is how it's broken down. Again, most of it going to the schools, uh, the city getting 22.5% of that money. To put that another way, to show you um, where your property tax dollars are going, uh, average home within Bellbrook is about $150,000. Uh, of that, uh, your total tax bill is $3,806. 2000 almost $2,100 of that going to the school district, 844 coming to the city of Bellbrook, Green County gets 635 and then these other entities. Uh, if you compare, th these were based on uh, taxes that were paid in 2016. If you compare that to the prior year, uh, that was a $281 increase. Uh, that was primarily uh, due to, uh, in this scenario, school district taxes went up $188 and the libraries passed a levy and the park district the green county park district passed a levy so those were another forty seven thousand forty seven dollars a piece so between those three levies that's what increased in the 281. now going forward for 2017 uh, there were no new levies or replacement levies passed for bellbrook residents in 2016. so other than any slight value changes or anything like that your property tax levy pro property tax bill should be about the same in 2017 than it was in 2016. Uh, again, I just an example here of what this was for um, a $200,000 home just to give you uh, an indication. But really, when you look at what the city gets, $844, that's $70 a month, probably less than your cable bill, your cell phone bill, uh, any of those bills, you're getting police, fire, 
you're getting uh, streets, you're getting zoning enforcement, you're getting all those services for $70 a month. Of the, the city revenue, or uh, as part of that, just another way to look at this, uh, in 2012, here's what it cost a Bellbrook resident for the services that are provided by the city. Property taxes, again, police, fire, uh, those types of things. Uh, water fees, if you're a, a typical water user, you were paying $271 for water, and your waste collection fees were $192, uh, totaling just under $1,300. That same cost, what we're anticipating in 2017, is actually dropped by $26 per year. So you're actually paying, a, a Bellbrook resident is paying less in 2017 than they were in 2012 for the services we provide. We've been able to do that by property taxes increased slightly only due to valuations that are done by the county auditor. Uh, water fees have not been increased since 2011, so we have not, no one has paid any more than they, than they would in 2011. And we were able to, with our uh, latest contract with uh, Rumpke, a five-year contract, actually lower our waste collection fees from 192 to 156. So the total bill of what actually comes for, this is again for a $150,000 home, is $26 less than what it was in 2012. Um, we haven't asked for any additional funds since 2012, and we've actually lowered some of the other fees. Mm -hmm. Now to talk about some of the expenses. Uh, on the expense side of, of uh, the ledger here, uh, we're budgeting about $7.2 million. 52% uh, of that comes from what we pay our employees to do the job. Police, fire, service workers uh, is 52%. Uh, but the other key component here is we're, we're putting 23% back into capital outlay. We're spending that money, we're putting back to make repairs to the streets, we're making repairs to the water lines, uh, things of that nature. And really, uh, other than those two things, everything else here are uh, contract services, things like our utilities and our maintenance contracts and, and things of that nature are what, and, and our dispatch contract are the, the major components there. So uh, really, we're, we're spending our money either uh, paying our employees uh, for the work they do or we're uh, doing capital outlay projects. That's where almost uh, over two-thirds of the money is going uh, as part of this budget. And again, just another way to look at uh, the breakdown. This is just operating expenses, so it takes out the, uh, the capital portion of, of things, but really our money is, is almost evenly broke up into four components. We have the police department, we have the fire department, we have the service department that encompasses the water department, and then we have the admin and the waste collection as the other. But uh, we really evenly split this money uh, th either through public safety and through our water and service department. As we talked about uh, at the beginning, uh, again, this is for property tax supported funds. Uh, we, we've seen a decline in our balance. We, for a period of time, were right about the $3 million level. Uh, we're anticipating that to go down. Uh, 2017, that's going to be about $2.5, $2.4 million. Uh, but as we forecast that out over the next five years, uh, we continue to see that deficit uh, come into play and, and that coming down here. So, uh, Council, we, we've talked quite a bit about uh, what do we need to do to sort of stem that uh, decline. Uh, and and in, the, in the coming year, there'll be some type of levy coming before uh, the voters. Council will have to uh, approve that, but that will be something we're, we're in the midst of trying to decide what type of levy that needs to be and when it needs to be put on the ballot. Uh, but, but this is really the reason that any, any future additional revenue is needed is to sort of stem that. Uh, we've been able to survive well, where a lot of communities have had to ask for taxes during this time. We've been able to survive without having to ask for additional taxes, uh, but we're getting to the point with the five-year forecast that that's going to be needed. Uh, on the other side, on the positive side, uh, the water fund, uh, as I said before, uh, we've seen an increase in this. A lot of this is due to uh, uh, those tap-in fees that we've been receiving from both city and township developments. We continue to see that. Uh, but this money is, uh, what, what it's done two things. One, number one, as I said, it, it's allowed us not to increase water rates since 2011. There's been no need to because we've had the, the balance to do what, we, what we've needed to do. Uh, and then also, this is gonna fund future capital needs. Uh, the, the, the existing part of the water system uh, Parts of it are 50, 60 years old. Uh, we are actively engaged in, in maintaining that, replacing that, uh, and one of the projects we'll be doing next year is a significant project to uh, replace some aging water lines. So we're, we're very proactive with that, but that's what this money is intended to do over time. 
So then we talk about the, uh, the capital improvement programs. Uh, we have a, a very aggressive uh, over $1.6 million in capital uh, improvements next year uh, through a variety of funds. But of that, we are getting uh, over $900,000 in grants and loans uh, to fund those. Th so the actual cost to the city uh, is uh, $739,000. Uh, the breakdown of, of those projects, uh, we have our annual street program again that we do every year. Uh, we're going to be working up in the Possum Run Road area uh, to finish some of those streets. That's what this $120,000 is. Uh, we received a grant, uh, a community development block grant for handicap replacement of $40,000, but of that $31,000 is going to be paid for that by that grant. And then the most significant are some water system improvements uh, in the Upper Hillside area. We're going to completely replace the water main in the Upper Hillside plat. Uh, because that water main is <coughs> at least 50 years old. Uh, it has the lowest pressure on our water system. That's a $1.2 million project. Uh, we have a grant for $600,000 and a loan for just under $300,000. So the, the actual cost to the water system uh, for 2017 is only about $300,000. And then the other uh, remaining capital improvement program items, uh, police vehicles and equipment. Uh, only $35,000 next year of that we are going to acquire uh, body-worn cameras uh, for our officers at a cost of $16,000. In the service department, about $150,000. We have uh, a, a one-ton dump truck that has to be replaced for $70,000 and a mowing tractor for $76,000. And in the fire department, it's $64,000. Again, no vehicles in that. It's uh, uh, replacement of some medic cots and some uh, self-contained breathing apparatus are the, are the larger ticket items there. So again, that is uh, a brief overview of the uh, 2017 budget and capital improvement program. Council knows a lot of this already. Uh, we will have uh, the actual budget document available on the website. Uh, after, if, assuming it's approved by council, we'll put that out there. Uh, we'll put this, count, this budget presentation. And if anyone uh, has any questions on this, we'd welcome their, uh, their input, their questions, and we'd be happy to answer anything that, uh, that they want to know. Council, any questions for our city manager? That well, was a good presentation, Mark, and I think that we're very effectively and efficiently spending the taxpayer money as if it's our own. And I, the key takeaways are that if we had not gotten cut out of the local government fund and also the estate tax, that would be nearly $300,000 of incremental revenue. And then secondly, out of a million six in capital that we're going to spend for the year 2017, it's important to realize that less than 50% is going to come from Bellbrook, and I think it's very important for everybody to understand that we're going to secure this $900,000 in grant funding, and that's a good win for us. So keep yes. up the good work. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank Mark for putting <coughs> it together. We spent three different sessions, over five hours, going essentially line by line through this whole budget, so we're all very well informed of it. Um, great job. Obviously, with revenues being very stagnant, and everything else going up at some point, we will have to start discussions on how are we going to increase funding. So that's something to come that we'll look at, I'm sure, in 2017. This is a public hearing. So if anyone in the audience would like to get up, I'm seeing everyone in the audience shaking their head no. <laughs> so I will call this public hearing closed. May I have a motion to approve ordinance number 2016-14? We would like to move for the approval of ordinance 2016-14. May I have a second? I'll second. Roll call. Motion by Mr. <coughs> Schweller to adopt ordinance number 2016-14, an ordinance approving the appropriations of the City of Bellbrook for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2017. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mrs. Seeger Lawson? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Moving on, introduction of ordinances. We have none this evening. We do have two resolutions. Resolution 2016-FF, Mr. Edwards. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution number 2016-FF, <coughs> resolution authorizing the transfer of funds for 2017, whereas the City of Bellbrook has adopted its budget for 2017, and whereas the 2017 budget will require the transfer of money among various funds and whereas the Ohio Revised Code, Section 5705.14, requires transfers of funds to be approved by City Council. Now, therefore, the City of Bellbrook hereby resolves, Section 1, that the transfer of funds be made by the City Manager as follows. From the General Fund 
to the capital improvement fund in the amount of two hundred fifty thousand dollars from the general fund to the police fund in the amount of one hundred thousand dollars from the general fund to the fire fund in the amount of one hundred fifty thousand for total transfer amount of five hundred thousand section two that the transfers <laughs> that the fund transfers shown as specific line items are hereby approved from and after the effective date of this resolution and be then completed as determined by the city manager. Section three, three, that this resolution shall take effect and be enforced forthwith. Yes, uh, the, this is just a requirement of uh, the Ohio Revised Code that the specific transfer be approved by council. Uh, they are included in the budget that was just approved, uh, but uh, it requires action of uh, council uh, for them to be, take place in 2017. <coughs> Any questions on council? Seeing none, may I have a motion to adopt ordinance number two thousand or adopt resolution two thousand sixteen dash FF. I'll make a resolution to adopt resolution number two thousand sixteen dash FF. A result a resolution re authorizing the transfer of funds for two thousand seventeen. May I have a second? Second. <clears throat> and roll call. Motion by Mr. Edwards to adopt <coughs> resolution twenty sixteen dash FF. <coughs> A resolution authorizing the transfer of funds for 2017, seconded by Mr. McGill. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mrs. Cedar Lawson? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. We have one more resolution this evening, resolution 2016-GG. Mr. Greenwood? Thank you, Mayor. Resolution number 2016-GG. A resolution approving a replat of lots number 36A and number 3C into <coughs> lots 36B, number 37A, number 38A, and number 3D. It's Highview Terrace Subdivision Section 1. Whereas the Ohio Revised Code requires a replat for changes of lot lines or easements in a plat of subdivision and <coughs> Whereas the City of Bellbrook's Consulting Engineer and the Bellbrook Planning Board have recommended approval of a replat of lots number 36A and number 3C into lots 30, number 36B and number 37A and number 38A <coughs> and number 3D, Highview Terrace Subdivisions, Section 1, <coughs> and Whereas the City of Bellbrook subdivision regulations stipulate that changes to a recorded plat shall be approved by action of the Bellbrook City Council. Now, therefore, the City of Bellbrook hereby resolves Section 1 that the replat of lots number 36A and number 3C into lots number 36B, number 37A, number 38A, and number 3D, Highview Terrace subdivision. Section 1 <coughs> is hereby approved for recording purposes. Section two, that the mayor and clerk of council are authorized to affix their signatures to the revised record plan. Section three, that this resolution shall take effect and be enforced forthwith. Yes, this uh, is an action that was approved by the planning board last Wednesday night. Um, uh, up on the screen here is a, uh, a rendering of what this is. So. Uh, lot 36A was primarily uh, what is lot uh, 36B, proposed to be lot 36B. Uh, as you see up here in this corner, there's a little tail. Uh, it was determined there was actually a house on this property that the driveway actually encroached on another lot here, so they replatted this so that the property owner here, uh, their driveway was on their lot, which makes sense. The rest of this was what was 3C. Uh, now they've divided it out into 37A, 38A, and lot 3D. The entrance to Highview Terrace, I should have said, is right here. This is the Terrace Creek coming in there. So this is that, right when you drive in, this is uh, at the entrance there. Uh, so I, I uh, assume that the uh, developer has uh, somebody that is w desiring to purchase these lots. That's generally when he uh, comes to ask to have them replatted. Uh, so now he can sell, once the, if this replat is approved, he can sell lot 37A, 38A, or lot 3D. Uh, to uh, individual home buyers if uh, if they are there. Um, be happy to answer any questions if uh, there are any. Any questions on council? Was there some easement changes on <coughs> Would that make a difference? I, I, 
I couldn't hardly tell by looking at the map. Yeah, there, there was a, a uh, slight drainage easement that was uh, uh, abandoned here uh, where this driveway was. But these easements, these drainage easements that are highlighted in pinkish color here, those remain. Those were existing and they'll okay. remain. And that's uh, uh, what is needed to get the, as, as if you've been there, this is uh, the big hill that comes down here. So the, mm. the drainage flows where it's going to flow. And th those easements are there for that purpose there. So. Uh, no, and then there's a, uh, over here there was a sanitary easement that was put in place, but again, this was reviewed by our engineer, also reviewed by the county sanitary engineer for, to make sure that they have what they need for future development uh, as these uh, uh, individual lots are built upon. And then was there a retention moved? Not as part of this, Not no. Not as okay. No, no. They're all, all the retention is on the, on the creek side down, down okay. over here. That's all I have. Any other questions on council? Seeing none, may I have a motion to adopt resolution 2016-GG. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to adopt resolution number 2016-GG. May I have a second? Second. And roll call. Motion by Mr. Greenwood to adopt resolution 2016-GG, a, resol a resolution approving the replat of lots 36A and 3C into lots 36B, 37A, 38A, and 3D, Highview Terrace Subdivision second, Section 1, seconded by, seconded by Mr. Schweller. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mrs. Seeger Lawson? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. That is all we have for resolutions this evening. We have a city manager report. Uh, yes. A um, couple items. Uh, Council committee appointments for 2016. I think uh, you have a sheet in front of you. Um, not only for the council committees, uh, but also for the appointments to the regional agencies. Uh, there's no action that's needed tonight, but at the first meeting in January is generally when. Uh, uh, we took we take action on this so if anyone has any desire to uh, switch committee assignments or to uh, maybe change their agency appointment uh, those are to the Chamber of Commerce to the Green County Regional Planning Commission uh, Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission and the firefighters dependency fund are the are the primary ones there so uh, if you do let us know and, and so we can talk about it but otherwise uh, this will be what the appointments uh, will move forward unless we hear differently from anybody um, uh, we talked about this uh, earlier with council, but the street banners are in place now. Uh, they were the, the remainder of them were put up today. Uh, I know that's a change from the, the snowflakes. I know the mayor has heard some about that, but uh, uh, the snowflakes had become a maintenance uh, uh, difficulty for us. Uh, hard to get replacement parts for them, things like that. So the banners are, are something that can stay up. They'll stay up for a longer period of time. They're more of a seasonal banner as opposed to a uh, Christmas type thing. Uh, so we'll keep those up probably until the, we approach spring, uh, whenever that may be. Uh, but they're up. I, I think the banners themselves look good, but they are different from the lighted snowflakes that have we've had in the past. Um, just a reminder that uh, with the holidays, officers offices here will be closed on December 23rd for Christmas Eve and the 26th for Christmas Day and uh, January 2nd for New Year's Day. So there'll be some closing those days. Um, and uh, a while ago, I think we talked about the community videos that had been redone. There was somebody coming in. Uh, those videos are now up live on the website, uh, the, the revised videos. Uh, so if anyone wants to look at them, you'll be able to find them on our website. I think they once again did a, did a nice job of those videos. Again, there's no charge to the city for the production of those videos. They go about they go out and solicit to some of the local businesses, try to get the, their business for those videos. Uh, but for us, it's a nice service to have uh, some videos that highlight the community. If somebody's looking to move into Bellbrook, uh, they can certainly look at those and get a good sense of the community. So uh, with that, the only other thing I have is our, our next meeting uh, will be on January 9th, uh, 2017. We have no more meetings scheduled uh, for 2016 unless uh, something were to come up and we had to schedule a special meeting. We Our uh, normal be meeting would have been on December 26th. I don't think uh, anyone wants to be here on that day. So that is all I have this evening. Does anyone have any questions for our city manager this evening? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, committee report service. Uh, 
Um, no report tonight. I just want to remind uh, people in the community when there is a weather advisory uh, to try not to park in the street if at all possible so that our street crews can get through and clean up the street. Safety. Uh, just a few things from uh, our chief. Um, there are open doors and driving under suspension uh, apprehensions are up between 100 and 150 percent. Uh, the open doors have been discovered mainly because of the bike program that you know you're at that level you see a lot more things on a bicycle and you know they call the people and have them get secured that's working out real well and uh, the driving under suspensions uh, they have the ability with computers in the cruisers that's allowing that to go forth a lot easier and get those people off the roads um, they participated in a shoe program took 12 children from Stephen Bell and Bell Creek Intermediate to pick out a brand new pair of shoes and this is conduct in conjunction with the fraternal order for police something they do every year that's a that's a great thing they do and the officers are handing out candy canes to local motorists that are stopped and issued written warnings he said it was very popular. <laughs> <laughs> the morning was popular. <laughs> a little candy cane to go with it. So. Mm -hmm. so our police and fire, they're still doing a great job. I really appreciate the work they do. Thank you, Forrest. Mm -hmm. uh, finance and audit, big night. Mayor, with the budget presentation tonight, I think we covered pretty much everything. And again, I've made this comment a couple times, but I just want to recognize the uh, city manager and staff for getting our budget done ahead of time. Uh, there's a lot of places adopted as uh, emergency legislation, but we've got this thing done, signed, sealed, and delivered in advance of uh, January 1, 2017. So that's really appreciated. Thank you. Community affairs. Um, mm -hmm. Just that uh, we had Christmas in the park was Saturday night. Uh, I guess the uh, line for Santa was extremely long, but people seemed to be willing to wait and had a nice time. So just wish the um, residents of the area a very joyous holiday season and we'll see you next year yes there was a pretty long line for santa and santa claus was very good this year um it was a little chilly out though it was but chilly <laughs> i think that that had probably some impact but there were a lot of people there mm -hmm. there it was a lot of people that's probably more than i've seen them. yeah and it was more of a rotation too because of the weather so yeah. I, I bet the total count was pretty large because probably of was people in and out so um, that is it for committee reports old business does anyone have any old business for us this evening any new business there's one on the back side oh, I didn't see it. Um, oh point Mary Graves to serve on the records commission term expires 12 31 18 um, we meet what a couple times once a year at least once a year we have to meet at least once a year um, and there's some essentially almost I want to say legislative but Ohio revised code statutes that you have to meet and go the, through this and Mary has been on that um, do we need a motion mm -hmm. does anyone have questions regarding that if not, then may I have a motion to appoint Mary Graves to serve on the Records Commission for a term expiring 12-31-18. And I assume that starts January 1st, yes. 2017. Yes. I move that we appoint Mary Graves to serve on the Records Commission for the term that expires 12-31-18. And may I have a second? Second. So, and roll call. Second. Um, Daryl. Daryl. Motion by Mrs. Seeger Lawson to appoint Mary Graves to serve on the Records Commission. Term expires 12 31 18. Seconded by Mr. McGill. Mrs. Seeger Lawson? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. And that is it for new business this evening, unless someone else has something. And last is open discussion. As this is our last meeting of the year, I just want to wish all our residents a happy and safe holiday season. That's all I have. Um, I, I just want to make a note on the budget, uh, Mr. Schlagek's letter to the mayor and council. I'm sure this will be published. Um, 
any residents, I think, if you look at this budget, make sure you read this letter because it more or less brings everything together in a simple format as to basically the way the budget works and what we're dealing with. So I, I, it's, a, it's a great letter and I think it, it's something that if you are looking at this budget, read that letter. Uh, it kind of puts everything in perspective. And then also I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I think it's been a good year for the city. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would say to our residents, uh, again, a happy holiday season coming up. And please drive safely in that out there because uh, there, I've seen some crazy drivers already <laughs> get, get, get going here on the season. But uh, one, one thing that I want to say about the budget would be that uh, 12 years ago when my wife and I moved down here to Bellbrook, um, one of the things that we looked for was a fiscally sound and area of government that attended to its finances, you know, and made them uh, work for the residents. And I think this budget does that. And I, so I, I agree with Mr. Greenwood here that you, you need to read the budget, you need to look at the letter, and you need to take all that information in hand, and you'll see that we're doing some fiscally sound reporting here and use of their money. and. Thanks to the city staff for putting it together. I just reiterate, um, I think this Mark and, and the staff are doing a fabulous job of basically spending the taxpayer money like it's their own. Um, very, very well uh, put together and um, services are delivered at a reasonable cost, especially in this day and age. And um, I would encourage people to at least take a look at it and, and understand where your tax dollars that go to the city are, are being spent, which is the only thing we have control over. Mm -hmm. And as um, everyone else said, have a very joyous holiday and a very safe one. I guess I would just like to add to what else has been said already. <clears throat> I think there's a lot of folks that live in this community that don't realize that we don't have an income tax. So us and Beaver Creek are the only cities locally that don't have a, a, an income tax. Um, and so property tax is how the, how the city um, uh, collects funds and, 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 and uses those funds in, in the various ways that Mark's out late uh, tonight. So I think the presentation was very good. Um, you are going to put that on the website so mm -hmm. people are interested in le learning more and understanding more, they can look on the website. Happy New Year. <laughs> Just want to wish the viewing audience a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And keep in mind our men in uniform that aren't able to be home during the holiday season. And also in memory of uh, former Councilman Ralph Fussner, don't drink and drive over this holiday season. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I would just like to thank the Council for a great year. Um, I thought we had a very good year this year. I'd like to thank Mark for putting a great budget together. Obviously, going forward, we're going to have challenges, but it shows our fiscal responsibility over the years to be able to put us in a position that we have time to work that out, and we've been doing that over the years and have not had a uh, tax increase since 2012 and not a increase in water funds for, I'm not sure how many years, yeah, six, seven, 2011, yeah. 2011. Uh, so, and we have had reductions in our trash services. So, uh, it's a good budget, but we are going to have to do something in the future. So, like everyone else on council said, please review the budget if you got a chance. It's all online. Uh, this will be on the online too to watch the meeting, and you can see Mark's summary of that. With that, with that, I'd just like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a uh, hopefully a, a good New Year. And this is open discussion for the audience. Okay, well you're more than welcome. I, I would tell you what to do, but I think you already know. Nina Herzog, 255 Upper Hillside Drive. Um, so just going back, not to the budget part of the um, water replacement, um, like how, you know, basically how soon are the res will the residents be notified about the replacement and, you know, um, will that be specifically by letter, by email, you know, or is it just going to be in a general newsletter? 
no for the for the water the upper hillside water upper project hillside, yeah. will that's, that's where i'm at right the 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 funding the actual funding is not available till july 1st so we're gonna we're gonna start the process after january 1st um w do the design of it first and then we'll begin the education process and and we're it's not just going to be in the yeah. newsletter um there's 120 odd homes or something like that up there uh, we're going to make sure that everyone is aware of this. Uh, it, it is going to have a significant impact uh, on their day-to-day -day lives. There's yeah. going to be a lot of construction activity. Yes. Uh, there's going to be a point in time where water has to be switched over from the old to the new and things like that. So, no, we're going to, as part of the, the lead-up process, we're going to develop that education campaign, make sure people are aware of what's going on, what the timing is, and what they're going to need to do. So. Uh, but we'll focus that just on that neighborhood because that's really all it's going to impact. Okay. Um, I'm glad to see that somebody, um, that heat pools went in. The heat wave pools, pools right pools, over here, um, right. And then, I don't know why I haven't noticed it, but the uniform sign still hanging out front. So I don't know, landlords, our time period. Uh, that's that's something we'll have to reach out to the landlord yeah. for, probably. So the like uniform uh, business is yeah, no yeah, longer there, no but they haven't taken down the, yeah, the, the sign. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the outside sign's not, you know, mm -hmm. right. one hanging. Yeah. Um, and then I just want to give props to the um, services for, this is the only place besides military bases that we've ever lived that those, not only the main streets plowed rather quickly, but the, you know, the plaques are done and are consistently, you know, over, you know, kind of kept clean or that, you know, they try to, you know, in the deeper snows, the faster snows, they try to at least get it down for snow falls, you know. But, yeah, uh, driving around some of the other, um, I've had fr I have friends in Kettering that, yeah, <laughs> theirs were never plowed and it iced over and Bellbrook to a good township. And that no no income tax. Mm. It wasn't like, like the plus of, of living in the township and living in Balbrook. So, uh, but yeah, I you know I love living in Balbrook and I love doing my history project on the two hundred. Seeing all what, what was and what actually what was in here before. <laughs> and I'm guessing uh, part of that like water project would be some uh, some road paving. Uh, ultimately, the, so the ultimately yeah. you also uh, once they replace the water main, get everything taken in, then they're going to completely resurface the entire, all the streets within Upper Hillside there. So it'll it'll be like new. Yeah. So. It'll, it'll take a while to get done. It will yeah. be yeah. definite yeah. inconvenience. It, 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 but in other words, it, as long as it's not well in school, it's probably the best time to take a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Does any member on council have any other business to come before this, this the last meeting of the year? No, Mayor. No, Mayor. Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>